Okay, so Leonard Euler was born in the year 1707 in Basel, Switzerland. And we'll come back to that on a map later. So he was born on April 15th in 1707. And his father, Paul, was a Calvinist preacher. Calvinist preacher. Okay, so Euler had a fairly religious upbringing, very Christian. And his father actually intended the exact same path for Leonard. And it was in 1720 that he entered the University of Basel, and he went there to originally study theology. Okay, and it was during this time period, the 1720s, early 1720s, that he met Johann Bernoulli. Okay, and Johann ended up becoming his tutor. Okay, so over here we have a picture of, of Johann. And... To put into perspective the greatness of this tutor, we have to look at his entire family tree. Okay, so the Bernoulli family was composed of many great mathematicians, okay, and they had three prominent ones, Jacob, Johann, and Daniel. Okay, and it just so happens that Johann becomes Euler's tutor. And to really understand the greatness of Johann, we have to go back and talk about when calculus was first invented. Okay, so calculus was independently created in the late 1600s by both Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. Okay, so Isaac Newton was from England and Leibniz was from continental Europe, I think Germany in specific, and I'll just put Europe here for short. Okay, and they ended up having a big priority dispute, basically over who found calculus first. Okay, and this dispute caused an enormous rift between England and continental Europe. Okay, and they essentially split paths and didn't communicate with each other on scientific matters for well over a hundred years. Okay, and it just so happened that Newton's notation was poor compared to Leibniz. Okay, bad notation. Okay, and actually today we use Leibniz's notation. So England fell behind a hundred years or so, and calculus in Europe took off. Okay, and it was the Bernoulli brothers, Johann and Jacob, that worked with Leibniz. Okay, and the Bernoullis worked on the first calculus textbook ever written. They actually helped the author prepare the textbook. Okay, so these were the smartest men in the world at the time, and are arguably some of the smartest mathematicians of all time, and it just so happens that Euler gets one of these brothers as his tutor. Okay, and this was in the 1720s. So it was in 1723 that he ends up graduating from the University of Basel, and he gets his degree in philosophy. And note here, master's is not the same kind of master's degree we have today, but that's what it was called back then. Okay, and you can tell that it's different because he went into the University of Basel at age 13, and it only took about three years to get this degree. Okay, and he received his degree in philosophy based off of comparing the philosophies of Isaac Newton and Rene Descartes. Descartes. Okay, and Rene Descartes is famous for introducing the coordinate plane to us. Okay, you might remember the XY plane, and these are all at right angles. Okay, and after he graduated, he tried to get a position with the University of Basel, but they didn't have any open. So, it was the Bernoulli brothers, Daniel and Nicholas, both sons of Johann, that started petitioning for Euler to come to St. Petersburg, Russia. Okay, so why St. Petersburg Academy? So, it was Peter the Great, who was leader of Russia at the time, and he decided to create an academy that could help Russia catch up to Europe in terms of their scientific output. Okay, so he created the academy, the academy at St. Petersburg. And after he dies, his wife, Catherine the first takes over. And so let's go up to our map here and take a look exactly where 
St. Petersburg is. Okay, so Euler was born in Basel, Switzerland, which is right in this area, and St. Petersburg is up here. Okay, so he travels there. And like I said, it was because Daniel and Nicholas Bernoulli began to lobby for him. Okay, and it turns out that Nicholas dies young, so Euler comes to fill his position. Now, Daniel was the head of math and physics, and what they had open for Euler was a position in physiology and medicine. Okay, and he spent a significant amount of time in these positions, and he actually joined the Russian Navy as a physician for quite some time as well. Okay, and if we go back up to our timeline, it wasn't until 1731 here that he finally becomes a professor of physics at the academy. And in 1733, Daniel Bernoulli decides to leave the academy, and Euler becomes head of mathematics. So Daniel leaves because Euler, when he arrives, Catherine I dies right away. And then to succeed her is Peter II. Okay, and the big problem with Peter II is that he's 12 years old. So the country of Russia falls into turmoil. Okay, and it continually gets worse and worse, and eventually Peter II dies, and it gets even crazier, and during that time period, Daniel leaves, and Euler takes over as head of mathematics at the academy. So the nobility of Russia did not trust the academy, mostly because it was full of foreign scientists. Okay, so a lot of the funding was cut, and... Euler definitely had his troubles, though he persevered and accomplished a huge amount of work at the Academy, and some of his best work comes from there. Okay, and it was in 1734 that he marries his wife, Katharina, and throughout their life they have 13 children, and it was in 1735 that Euler finally makes a huge dent on the international mathematics scene when he solves the Basel problem.